In October 1972, my husband, our two babies, my brother, and I left Leavenworth, Kansas in our 1968 Volkswagen van on a camping trip to a recreational area in Arkansas called Beaver Lake. When we finally got there, we found a fairly remote campsite at the far end of the park. We wanted to be alone as the babies woke often during the night and needed to feed. We didn't want to disturb any other campers. Shortly after pulling into our campsite, my brother pitched his tent next to the van. The rest of us were going to sleep in the van. The campsite was in an area with a horseshoe-shaped, rocky, terraced ledge that rose from around 50 feet to around 100 feet as it curved around behind the four campsites. Because of mature trees and thick brush, daylight had trouble poking into our spot. Fast forward to that night, sometime around 3.30 a.m., I heard some animal sounds on the ridge that I thought were being made by coyotes. The babies were asleep and all was quiet otherwise. I peered out the window but still couldn't see what was making the sounds because it was so dark. Still hearing odd yips and howls, I laid back down on the back seat. Moments later, there was a huge crashing bang on the van wall right next to my head. My husband leaped up out of a full sleep. My brother bolted out of his tent and jumped into the van with us. We were all in a panic, looking in every direction trying to see what had hit the van like that. My brother finally yelled that he saw something moving behind the van. We all turned just in time to see a large shadow moving about 20 feet behind the van from left to right. After about 20 minutes had passed without any of us seeing movement out there, my husband and brother went out to inspect the van for damage, but found none. We then started hearing pounding steps coming from the brush about 50 feet behind us. The guys eased back into the front seat of the van. That's when my husband turned on the headlights and stepped on the brake pedal for rear light. Instantly, there was a huge commotion. He started the engine, and that's when, in the glow of the headlights, we could see a hairy thing, ten feet away and coming towards the van. As it got closer, its silver-tipped hair glistened in the light. It had a grayish streak from its shoulders, down its back, to its buttocks. The creature was walking on two legs, was around seven or eight feet tall, had a barrel chest and skinny legs. It never gave us a good view of its eyes, so I can't tell you what they looked like. I could see that the face was not ape-like. It was dog-like. Its ears had tufts of fur on the tips of them, and it was very human-like in its movements and general body structure. It moved smoothly and quickly around to the back of the van, where it followed the base of the ridge away from us. That's when it let out a menacing huff and a low, rumbling growl, like a dog. Insanely, my husband and brother bolted from the van, trying to get a better look. That's when a shower of gravel came at us. My husband and brother tore back into the van and burned up the road getting us out of there. I kept looking out the back window and they looked in the rearview mirrors, but none of us ever saw it again. It just didn't seem like a Sasquatch was what we had seen. It seemed too dog-like in its face and was too slim in its body. I still have PTSD-like feelings to this day due to that encounter. I used to work about 30 miles away from where I live. One night, I had been stuck in heavy traffic coming home. I take Lasix, so after a while, I really had to go to the bathroom. I kept telling myself that I was almost home and tried to hold it until I got there. By the time I got to my exit, I knew I wasn't going to make it to my house, so I pulled up to an area where Fidelity Investments is located and found an area that was isolated. This area is heavily wooded, with walking trails and a lot of game, but it is also in a very populated area. I pulled up a little side drive off one of the main roads, 
That little drive is about a hundred feet long, with only room for one car. It went up in elevation and had bushes on the right side, facing the main road. On the left side, there was a guardrail and a view of the valley below. The area up there is huge and isolated, with several buildings that are all spaced out. The place is dark at night, because there are intermittent street lights up there. At night, it's pretty deserted, too. A few cars go through that area, though, because it's a shortcut people used to go from Taylor Mill over to 3L Highway, where there are stores, restaurants, etc. When you're up there, you're above everything around this area. When I stopped, I got out of my car, waited a moment, and looked around to make sure there were no other cars. It was winter, so the bushes between where I was and the road below me didn't have many leaves on them. Because of that, you could see right through them. I was up on this little rise, about 20 or 30 feet above the drive, which was four lanes wide. To the left of me was a street light, and more woods that went down another hill, to the main road. I went to the back of my car and did what I had to do. When I finished, I stood up, and all at once, every hair on my body stood up. I knew I wasn't alone. I scanned the area in front of me and must have heard something behind me, because I turned around and there were three deer standing there, all huddled up together, between my car and the guardrail. They weren't looking at me. They were looking across the road. I looked back over there, and that was when I saw a figure standing between the bushes in front of it and the tree line behind it. It was huge. I stand 5'5". Five five. Some of those bushes were about 6 feet tall, but they only came up to about the collarbone area on this thing, due to the street light to the right of it. About 20 feet away, I was able to get a pretty clean outline of this thing. It had a large, dog-shaped head and pointed ears. I couldn't make out its neck, but I could make out massive shoulders. That's when it growled. It was a deep vibration I could feel in my chest. My body just took over at that point. I have to explain this part of it to you. I worked security for years in California, in the music business. As a woman, I have to really work out and train to defend myself. I kickboxed for eight years and worked out every day. I also trained dogs, mainly Anatolian Shepherds and German Shepherds. Sometimes I have to establish who is the Alpha, and to do that, I get them down, hold them in place, grab them by their ear, and growl until they submit. Then the training can start. So when this thing growled at me, it was just pure instinct. I dropped down to a crouching position and growled back. When I did that, it stopped growling and started sniffing the air. Its snout went up and it turned its head slightly as it was sniffing. It then took a few steps forward. I was still crouched down on all fours and moved forward, still growling at that thing. When I did that, it stopped. I stood up and kept staring right at it. I never broke eye contact with it. Then it slowly stepped back into the tree line, until I couldn't make it out as clearly as before, and started to move to the right of me. The deer were still behind me. They were so close I could have reached out and touched them. I waved my arms and told them to get out of there. When I did that, they went back over the guardrail and took off down the hill. That's when I jumped in my car and got out of there as fast as I could. I felt this thing was trying to circle behind me, and I wasn't going to wait around for that. Do I think I scared it? No. But I do think I confused it for a couple of minutes, and that gave me time to move. I told my husband about what had happened up there, but I didn't tell him exactly what I saw. He would think I was nuts, and to be honest, I thought I was a little crazy myself until I saw a picture of a dog man. I know there are other things in this world that can't be explained. I've seen them, but this was beyond any of those things. Since this has happened, I can't take that shortcut through that area. My husband took me back over that way once to see the area, 
and I was begging him to get me out of there the whole time. I thought I was going to throw up. The wildlife up there has almost totally disappeared. I never see anything up on the hills anymore. The street I live on is only about one mile or so down the hill from this place, and lately we have seen coyotes on the streets, like they have been chased out and pets here have started to go missing. We've also seen a large black figure moving through our backyards down here. The dogs throughout the neighborhood go crazy regularly now. People were calling the cops when we saw that large black figure jumping fences. I'm concerned that it has come down the hill after eating everything up there. I saw a dog man walking along the green belt in Boise, Idaho, and to be more specific, the area would be Garden City. The actual location on the green belt would be the area of the green belt that is just on the other side of Veterans Parkway Bridge. For those not familiar with the area, the Boise River flows through downtown Boise and Garden City. The green belt is a walking, biking pathway that is paved that goes right next to the river. It was 3.15 a.m., February 2008, and I was scraping the ice off my car window. I had to be at work at 4 a.m. I realized that it was eerily quiet. I looked up, and I saw it walking along the green belt towards the Veterans Parkway Bridge. The bridge goes over the Boise River, and the green belt pathway goes underneath the bridge. It was tall, I would guess over 7 feet. It turned its head and looked at me. It had green, neon-colored, glowing eyes. I said out loud, Oh my god! It turned its head back and continued walking along the green belt. It was walking slowly. I was frozen with fear and didn't move until I saw it vanish behind the building that is next to the Veteran Parkway Bridge. I assumed that it continued along the green belt under the bridge. It had dark brown fur all over its body pointed ears, long snout, weird legs, and a tail. I got a pretty good look at it. That section of the green belt is at the end of a dead-end street and has a couple of businesses there with parking lots that are all lit up with street lights. I only saw it that one time. I wasn't there, but my son, son-in-law, and their friend saw a dog man. My son called me all freaked out that they had seen a Bigfoot because he knows I believe in Bigfoots. Now, my son always made fun of me for believing in Bigfoots. He asked me, Dad, can Bigfoots run on all fours? I said yes. Why do you ask? And he said, Dad, we just saw one while out spotlighting rabbits. I asked him to describe what it looked like, and he said they were hunting rabbits with a spotlight, and he saw something hunched over. He said he then yelled to the others and let them know that he had seen something, and then started to shine his light on it. At first, he thought it was a large bird because it was down like it was eating something. Then it stood up on its hind legs and spread its arms out wide, and when the other two came to look at it, it dropped down and took off faster than anything they had ever seen before. He said it had a dog snout and was covered in fur, but you could see it was very muscular. My son is 6'2", and he felt it stood as tall or taller than him. When it took off, they ran after it and watched it jump and clear a huge rock pile in one leap, like nothing. That scared them, and they all ran back to their car to get out of there. I spoke to all three, and they all had the same story and described it the same way. I told my son that's not a Bigfoot, because Bigfoots don't have dog snouts. I told him, you saw a dog man. It's funny that this happened around a lot of cornfields. The area also had caves and was covered in sagebrush. My encounter happened a few years ago in South Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Here in Louisiana, we call counties parishes, in case you didn't know. I was hunting deer or wild pigs one night. 
on a protection levee system that was built to protect the town from hurricane flood waters. As I walked to where the levee turns off to the left, there was a canal with woods that was about a hundred yards from some houses. To the left was a natural ridge that goes out into swamps and marshes. Well, as I made that turn from the ridge of oak trees, I heard a growl. I thought it might have been a coyote or a dog, so I walked slower. Then I heard brush and a smaller sized tree shake and another growl. I shined my light in the direction of the sound and saw a pair of eyes that were reflecting an amber yellow color. What surprised me was the fact that the brush was about six foot high and the eyes were about a foot above the brush. When I saw those eyes, I slowly backed up while keeping my light on the thing as I walked back to the turn to head back to my truck, which was parked about three quarter of a mile away. It came out of the woods. I lit the thing up with my light again. Now, I was probably 30 feet from it. I saw its whole body and face. The body was covered with black hair, with some brown mixed in. The hair was thickest around its head, neck, chest, and upper back. It looked a lot like a lion's mane, but wasn't as pronounced, since all of the hair was the same color. It had pointy ears, with a little bit of hair coming off the points, making the ears seem a little longer. It stood on two legs, but the legs were weird and backward-like. The arms were really long, longer than the legs. Its hands were like a mixture of human and bear, like really big raccoon front paws. It had paws, but it also had fingers. That's the only way to describe it. If you watch the movie The Howling, you'll get an idea of what this thing looked like. It's as if whoever made that movie knew something others didn't. Now, at this point, I was freaking out. So I pulled up my rifle. I hunt with a Romanian AK with a camo paint job I did myself. The way I was hunting wasn't exactly legal. That's why I took my Romanian AK. If I had to toss it, I wouldn't be out much money. The rounds I use are special rounds. Made to hunt feral dogs. I've dropped deer and hogs with these rounds before. One shot, and they're done. But back to the story. As I pulled my rifle up to the ready, it growled and walked a few steps towards me. I fired a round right into its chest area. I knew I had hit it, because the creature took a step back. As it stepped back, I ran towards my truck. That's when I let out a loud growl and a howl like I had never heard before. I grew up hunting and fishing and thought I knew everything in the woods, but I hadn't heard anything like the sounds it made before. As I ran back to the truck, it stalked me but kept its distance. As I got close to the well-lit area where my truck was parked, by the town library and elementary school, it stopped following me. I tried to find anyone who may have had similar encounters in the area, but all I could find was old legends of the Rugaru, which is pronounced Rugaru. I told my grandpa about what had happened, but told him it was a friend who had told me it had happened to him. I also told him that it sounded like a crazy story to me. He told me when he was 17, in the exact same area, at night, hunting, he heard a howl like nothing he had ever heard before. He also told me that something had stalked him as he ran home that night. He said he had never saw what it was, but could hear it was following him through the brush and the swamps. That encounter has changed my life. My perception of what is real and what is not will never be the same again. I still haven't gotten over that night. I went back a few days after that incident and found two large dog tracks, as big as my hand. I wear a size LG glove. It was the summer of 97, and I was 13 years old. I was rollerblading from a part of town called Old Cottage Grove. I guess I should start off by saying that the city where this happened was a suburb of St. Paul, Minnesota, called Cottage Grove. 
It was around 9.30 p.m. and I was rollerblading back home from a girlfriend's house with a friend. We were just coming around a bend in the road that went past a farm that I believe at the time was called Green Acres Farm. I'm not exactly sure what it was they did at that farm, but I do know for sure, at the time, there were always cattle of all different ages, sizes, and genders, which brings me to the conclusion that maybe I was just at the right place at the wrong time. As I was rounding the bend in the road to start coming up the hill, I felt a very strong sense of fear. It was like my body was telling me to get the heck out of there yet I couldn't figure out why. I can tell you this much, though. For the first and only time in my life, I felt like I was no longer at the top of the food chain. Right when I started to pick up the pace to get out of there is when I heard a sound that came from the fenced-in cattle farm to my left, maybe 15 to 20 yards behind me. It sounded like nails grabbing a pole or fence, and then was sounding like what a dog's paws and claws sound like when walking or running on a tile floor. Except, this just sounded like a quick leap on the street's pavement. As I turned around to look, there stood what looked to be a wiry, gray-haired werewolf. It was like time had stopped. There was a street light at the time in the woods, maybe five feet behind it, so all I could make out was a silhouette of this monster. It had to be at least seven feet tall, with the head of what looked like a German shepherd, with huge ears and a huge muzzle. I could see this thing was built like a bodybuilder. It stood bipedal, like a man, not like what some folks say with these things having dog-like limbs. It had long, slim hands with black nails on its fingertips. It had a slim waist, but its upper body was muscular beyond belief. The thing that always stuck with me, besides the point of seeing this thing in the first place, was that his head was turned to the side and snout up in the air. The one thing that really stuck out and was out of place to me was that I could see this thing breathe as though it was winter. But mind you, it was the end of June, almost July. It looked as though it was smelling my scent, but that's just what it looked like. I'm not positive on that. Before I knew it, I was yelling to my friend to get the heck out of there and not to look back, but it's almost as though he was in another world because he didn't seem to feel, let alone see what I had just experienced. I'm somewhat of an artist and drew a picture of what I saw, which was a werewolf. Fast forward 17 years later. I still hadn't told anyone about this encounter. That is, until my oldest brother and I were trading stories one summer evening, and it just sort of came up as we were talking about Bigfoot. Mind you, my brother's a firm believer in this animal. So I said the heck with it and started telling him about what happened to me, going to the point of pulling out the original drawing I drew of it. To my surprise, he didn't look at me or laugh at me like I was positive he would have. Instead, he started asking me if I had ever heard of the Michigan Dog Man, or seen anything on it, which I replied no. He then pulled up an image on the internet of a sketch that an eyewitness had drawn, and I swear to you, it sent shivers down my spine, because it not only looked like my drawing, it looked exactly like the thing I saw that night in the summer of 97 in Old Cottage Grove, Minnesota. To this day... I still find myself trying to wrap my head around what I saw. I'm 33 years old now, yet still find myself trying to rationalize what I crossed paths with that night. It feels good to get this out there and somewhat off my chest. I hope someone finds something helpful in this experience, and I hope this sort of thing never happens again. On the night I had my brief encounter, it was unusually slow. During slow parts of my night, I park outside the facility that I work out of and watch the wildlife. It's abundant with a mixture of fox, coyotes, raccoons, and every once in a while, I'll spy a little red wolf breaking the wood line, trotting across an open field in search of small game. 
Our facility is located on a dead-end street, which backs up to a major creek, and to the left, we have a smaller creek that breaks off to the larger one. Both creeks are fed by a large river, about a mile away. I should also mention that we have large patches of woodland that lead to our facility, and that the area does not have a lot of light until you turn into the parking area. About a week prior to my encounter, I would sit at the end of the road to complete my paperwork and wait for the next call to come. As I parked there, I would get a sense of being watched. I would look up, almost expecting someone to be standing in front of my truck. Let me say that the darkness or the woods do not spook me, nor make me jumpy. I was raised in the swamp, close to a river, and rather enjoy the solitude. Not only did I have a sense of being watched and sharing my space with someone, I noted that there were no normal night sounds, such as crickets and frogs. I also found it baffling that all the wildlife seemed to be gone from the area. This really bothered me. I couldn't figure it out. On the night I had my encounter, I decided to leave some wet dog food at the edge of the wood line, hoping to entice a family of raccoons out, so I could at least see that they were okay. This family of raccoons I had watched grow up from kits, and not seeing them bothered me. Also, I didn't see a gray fox that would hang around that area. This fox would come within four to five feet from you, but would be guarded all the while. He would hang out with certain people and then retreat back into the woods. Anyway, I popped the top off some smelly dog food as I was pulling the top off the can. I heard a deep growl come from out of the edge of the wood line. I had never heard an animal growl with such force and so deeply. At first, I thought it could have been a jake break from the interstate. That can be heard from our facility, but that's not what it was. I could feel, hear it from the wood line, hitting my face and felt the growl inside of my chest, pretty much like a vibration. I knew this was not a bear, the same as someone knows their left hand from their right, you just know. And yes, we do have bear here, but I can tell you quite bluntly and very firmly, this was not a bear or any other wildlife that was normal to the area. I dropped my head down and refused to look up. I dumped a can of food on the ground with one hard thump, hoping whatever was in the wood line would rather have the can of food instead of me. I backed away with my head down until I reached my truck. My instinct told me to drive away, and so I did. About half an hour later I returned, due to my curiosity overruling my common sense. Being a natural skeptic, I was prepared to figure out the earlier event. I parked in the same place, and this time had walked to the back of my truck to smoke. While standing there, I observed a dark mass come across the road and disappear into an open field that is mostly overgrown with wild blackberry bushes and grass. I have a trained eye. I take in a lot of detail, and still... I admit to suffering from short-term memory loss due to a TBI that ended my law enforcement career. What I saw at that moment, though, will be in my memory forever. I can only describe this creature as what I took at the time to be kind of a hybrid, although it was on all fours. To me, it did not appear natural. It moved with very quick, fluent motions. Looking back, I was mostly surprised by the creature having the intelligence to attempt to appear natural. Something was off with its gait, though. It was kind of like the front legs were pulling its body forward. The back was hunched at the shoulders, and it had a long back. The creature was black, which I can only describe as a dark mass, with no reflection. I also noted it had a small animal in its mouth. The strange part was that I could see the definition of most of the small animal, compared to the darkness of the creature that I now believe to be a dog-man. The snout was long, but it fit its body. What struck me most were its ears. They were folded back like you might see on a Dutch Shepherd or German Shepherd. I guess with my background, working with dogs, the ears were clearly defined to me. 
I can't say what kind of tail it had or what color its eyes were. I just know it was there one minute and gone the next. When daylight came, I looked for tracks, but listened to my gut and did not enter the field looking for it. The ground leading out of the smaller creek was covered in grass, and what dirt was there was hard. I was left baffled, but more amazed than anything. I sat on my experience for several months. I didn't tell anyone about it. I then started searching the internet for what I had seen. I guess, in my mind, I wondered if it was some type of hybrid created by man and had escaped. I found several sites on the internet, but none seemed to come close to what I had seen. Nothing until I came across a picture of a dog man. If you take what I saw and stand it upright, instead of being on all fours, well, that's what I saw. With a doubt, I'm pretty sure this dog man was a young adult, but it wasn't overly massive. What I ponder the most is the fact the dog man had to catch my scent before clearing the wood line. I know scent. I know how it works. The dog man knew I was there before coming out of the woods. I suppose that will be the answer I will never have. After a few months of keeping my experience to myself, I spoke with a few of my co-workers. Of course they told me it was a bear or a large wolf, but they did acknowledge that the wildlife had disappeared for a while. I was told to share my story, but I think it was only so my co-worker could get a good laugh at me behind my back. I stand by what I saw, although I don't speak about it much because of people like him. I have never been fascinated by Bigfoot or other similar creatures, although I did respond to a Bigfoot call off the record for a law enforcement friend, but at this point I am consumed with what I saw that morning and learning more about it. I am grateful that people are around for support for people like me. As I write this, I am once again on night shift, parked at the same spot where I had my encounter. I'm pretty sure that the dogman has left the area. Wildlife is back, and the night sounds are all around. I guess I will always wonder if it will come back again, but I can't say I will ever walk the woods at night again, looking for animal tracks myself. Thanks. My parents had a house in the countryside, in Styria. To give you a little layout of the area, we lived in a valley surrounded by other houses. The valley itself was surrounded by thick forest, and still is. There were two bigger roads you could take to leave the valley. One would lead to the city, the other one went down a hill to a small village. Both roads went through the forest. I was 15 at the time, and decided to spend the day at a friend's house in that village. I stayed a little longer than I usually would, and by the time I was ready to head home, it was dark outside. I had a mopped auto cycle at the time, which was really slow going up hills. So I rode out of the village and was riding over a bridge. Before I reached the end of the bridge, I thought I saw something to my right in the forest, but I figured it was nothing. Pressing on, I rode up hills on the road and continued through the forest. As soon as I passed the part where I thought I saw something in the forest, something stepped out of it. I couldn't see what it was because there were no street lights, but I had a bad feeling in my gut. I rode as fast as I could, around 21 miles per hour, and when I looked in the side mirror, I saw two yellowish eyes right behind me. Whatever it was followed me like that, halfway through, until we reached a fork where a farmer had cut a little path in the forest. The entrance to it is usually blocked by a gate similar looking to a railroad gate. Whatever was following me just raced to this gate. It was way faster than my moped, jumped over it, and ran into the forest. We don't have bears or wolves here, and why would a deer follow me, let alone that close, maybe two feet away? Sadly, it wasn't my last encounter with this thing. It was 2.30 a.m., and another night of not being able to sleep due to back pain. 
I was lying on my side, reading, when my very close by neighbor's motion detector light turned on. This happens from time to time. When it turns on, it lights up the entire side of my house. We have lived here nine years, and I have never once seen anything walk past my bedroom window at night. Since I was facing my large bedroom window, the very bright motion detector light going off caught my attention. I looked up and saw the side silhouette of a dog man. I said, holy crap. It was walking past my bedroom window. I saw it from mid shoulders up. The shoulders were huge and its head was huge. It had pointed ears like a German shepherd dog and a long snout. Its mouth was slightly open as I saw a large tongue that seemed to be lolling to the side of its mouth. When I saw this creature and spoke those words, I could swear that that thing slowed down, smirked, and then kept going. That's all I saw that night. Last week, though, while in my bedroom again, I heard something huge land on the ground, behind my bedroom wall. That wall has no windows. I heard deep, kind of raspy breathing. I started praying pleading the blood of Jesus over my house, grounds around it, and all. I do this most nights, but sometimes I forget. I'm awake most nights until 3 a.m. or later due to having severe spine issues, as well as fibromyalgia. We live in a lovely manufactured home community. There are lots of trees around here, and it's very close to canals, large open fields, and woods. I know this is what I saw, but the fact that I saw it has left me amazed. Why is that, when so many are also seeing them? I guess I just thought since I am in the house most of the time due to my health, I would never see one. The space between my neighbor's house and ours is about ten feet. My husband went outside weeks later, once I got the courage to tell him this has happened, and measured the area by the window. That dog man had to be at least eight feet tall. What concerns me greatly is that no one in the police department or government will alert people to their existence. People are walking around feeling a false sense of security. I know I did. I won't even try to walk outside anymore. And yes, I have cautioned my neighbors, the ones with the security light. I can't think of any other details right now. But it's important for you to know that several years ago, a homeless woman was camping out down by the river here in Albany. She was found dead, and her tent was really torn up. I believe the police report in the newspaper said she was torn up as well, but I honestly can't remember any of the details. To the best of my knowledge, no one was ever caught for that crime. This is a sleepy town, just over 50,000 people. We no longer get the newspaper so I have no idea if this has happened again. I do know that a couple was down by that same area and saw a dog man. It really frightened them badly. I heard about that on another YouTube channel. I just want people to be aware so they don't go out at night anymore, especially near the river. But then, we're not near a river, and I saw one in the middle of the night. Thank you for reading this report and for doing all that you do. To make people aware of what is really going on out there. My brother and I were waiting for our bus at our usual corner stop. It's about three blocks away from our house and there's a pretty densely wooded creek nearly one to two blocks behind our bus stop. The first thing I noticed that was off was that my brother was standing completely rigid, staring intently down the long road. There are only two street lights and a few automatic porch lights down there. I shook him a little bit and asked him what he was looking at. He shushed me almost immediately. Then out of the corner of my eye, I saw a large, black shape darting on two legs across the street to the line of the houses on the other side before disappearing. Thankfully, our bus arrived soon afterward. So we got out of there. Hey guys, it's Tails. Uh, I do hope that you enjoyed these other true encounters with the dog man. 
I hope to have more coming soon. And be careful out there. You never know what you may encounter in the woods as the earth is old and we've only been here not so long. Anyway, keep listening, subscribe, hit that bell button, and stay safe.